Hello happy DIYers and woodworkers man here with Heartwood Art and today we're going to talk about building this wonderful workbench. This is a two-part series and this is part two. Be sure to look above or below this video wherever you happen to be watching it for the link to part one about building the frames because today we're going to attach the frames to each other. We're going to talk about these stretchers that go from front to back and attach the frames and support your lower shelf and your top shelf and we're going to mount the casters. Hey, if you're enjoying this series, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and come on over to heartwoodart.com and get the build plans for this workbench. Okay, let's dive in. Now getting everything square with your workbench frame built is so important. And to ensure all of my stretcher boards were exactly the same length, I used a stop lock on my miter saw again, like I did for cutting the rails in part one. And then I put pocket holes in both ends. And you can see my Craig Jig cheat sheet and tips for how to create those pocket holes. Okay, let's install the top stretchers. Flip your frame supports upside down and be sure the aprons are facing out. Then dry fit your stretchers for the top, which are now on the floor. And then check square. This is the single most important part of the whole process. Check square all over, and not just once, but between every corner you attach. I used a Craig right angle clamp and a regular clamp to hold the first corner once I got it square. And then I put another clamp on the opposite corner to ensure nothing moved. Do both ends, and then the middle stretcher. And keep checking square before you screw each time. I can't overemphasize how important this is if you want your bench to go together dead square. Okay, now let's install the bottom stretchers. These are a little harder as you no longer have the floor for support. And it's even more important to check and double check square before you screw because of that. Now after you finish that and while you have your frame upside down, this would be a great time to install your casters. And you can see my post for how to attach casters to your workbench legs for details. Okay, now it's time to flip your frame over. And it should look like this. And now it's time to cut your top and lower shelf plywood or whatever you're going to use for those. So take your final measurements for your lower shelf. Now with the frame built this way, there's no need to cut notches around the legs for your lower shelf. So it will be a square cut. And you can see my post on how I safely cut plywood on the floor for this part too. And then see my homemade circular saw straight edge guide to make straight cuts. All right, now it's time to install your lower shelf. Now I use brad nails to attach mine. And I love how easy my Ryobi brad nailer made this job. When you're finished with that, install your workbench top. And I used a nice piece of three quarter inch plywood with an oak top for my workbench. And then I treated it with two coats of boiled linseed oil and then one coat of paste wax. And no, oil and wax don't get on anything I put on the top. And this is the finish that best suits how I'll be using my workbench. And you can see my post for the best workbench top and video for tips to help you decide what workbench top and attachment method works best for your needs. And voila, your workbench is done. I sure hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on building this workbench. Be sure to look for a link above or below this video wherever you happen to be watching it for the other part of it. And come on over to heartwoodart.com for the full build plans and I'll see you in the shop.